trust your gut, trust your instincts, because that instinct is who God made you to be. Not, you know, what lines up with your like frat brothers or what lines up with what your dad wanted or what lines up with your classmates or, you know, it's just, God has something inside of you. And, and when you walk down the street, you're thinking about it and then you just see it in the window. And you go down another street and you see the same thing, or you're thinking about a number and that number pops up, or you see it on a license plate. And that's just, you know, something is trying to say, be the maximum, yay. You know, be the maximum you. And God won't give you anything that you can't handle. So for me, everything is a yes. I think they say, be like water. I know Bruce Lee said that. Or matter of fact, just be. Because we are beings with engineering opportunities. My first fashion show in Paris, Christine Santanera that went on to be Virgil's main stylist at Louis, she's working with us at Gap, right? So when the Balenciaga, I told her, remember the night before the first fashion show in Paris back in like 2011? And the stuff, it was barely coming together. And she, she started crying and said, they all gonna laugh at you. And I gave her a hug and said, but well, we still gonna do it. Mm. You know, that laughing, that's a holographic wall of shame that you just gotta go through. But to just get into that mentality of maximum confidence, me and Justin be on that maximum confidence. Me and Future be on that maximum confidence. This video game is two buttons you can hit, love or fear. And we about that love, not being in fear. And sometimes I go real like radical with it. Like, okay, just come and get me. Cause I'd rather that than to live in fear. Because if you living in fear, you the walking dead anyway, you a zombie. It's for me to have this platform and express exactly what I feel because it's kids out there, right? That it's kids that are gonna save the world through engineering and through facts and I've got to get download as much of the information and as much of the don't be afraid to state your facts is the biggest thing because the world is being ran by fear and that is no actually God runs the world but there's just like little cloud this patina of our ego that deals with the money and the car and the girl we're dating and all this in the clothes we wear and spending too much on clothes and a lot of stuff that I've been involved with promoting. So now what I'm promoting is you have the idea, you say it out loud, like you, like if you had Tourette's, say your truth out loud. If you hate, yay, you hate me, say that out loud. Say whatever you feel out loud. Like you say it non-violently, you know, non-violent. I have to say that like as, you know, as a shout out to Alex Jones and Trump, where they try to say that when they say their truths out loud, that it's inciting violence. So let's be like really clear. I'm saying that they have uh, criminalized free thought. People use they, like they gets the blame for everything, right? What schools are doing is exactly what the CIA does with Pixar films and Disney films. They make Bambi's mom die in the beginning, right? And off that pain comes a purchase of ice cream. Off that pain comes, I need some more toys. Off that pain comes, I need a bigger house. Off that pain comes, I need more girls than my wife. Off that pain comes, so they put that pain in to make us, now we're the orphans of capitalism, to make us be consumers. And we need to be a community, not just consumers. So I could have went another seven minutes by being a person who presents himself in a way that says, well, I don't have to feel your pain because I also have pain too that's not being recognized. And in every interview, when I say, well, why did I get to the point of putting up the tweet? No one wants to understand why I got to that point, you right? You had pain, you had pain. Yeah, but let's say this. Undoubtedly, Jewish people have a lot of movies about that pain and black people have a lot of movies about the pain of slavery, right? It's almost impossible to find a movie about Mansa Munsa. When you go to the African History Museum in Washington, D.C., it doesn't start with the idea of Africans being kings. 
It starts with the idea of Africans being slaves. Ultimately, I am fighting a battle in the spiritual form. And anyone that believes in God and is looking at this interview would agree with that. And I just so happen to be a bright part of God's army. I'm fighting for us to live. The greatest gift is life itself. I am pro-life. I am pro-God. I believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and died for our sins. First of all, knowledge, because knowledge is the most important resource to our species above water. Knowledge <laughs> it's itself, because then you can go get water. I mean, you could argue like if you're a baby, how do you get water? But, but the baby doesn't have it, you know? So someone with the knowledge then feeds the uh, baby the water, but it's important that those with the knowledge teach the baby how to find the water themselves. And the business people that I've been dealing with have been keeping the baby sick by not sharing the information and the knowledge with inside of those contracts. My people are sick. If I load up Apple Music right now and I play the top songs in the rap chart, I would tell you my people are sick. If I go to the restaurants in Opportunity Zones and we look at the calorie rating and the cholesterol, I will tell you that my people are sick. If we look at the obesity rate, if you go to just a restaurant somewhere in, in middle America, Denny's or something, I went to Denny's the other day, you will see that my people are sick. And my people meaning all people, right? But black people are very influential to all people. So, right, if so, if the media picks overweight black woman and says this is body goals, then the media are influencing my people to stay sick. After 20 years that I had to call it out in one tweet that now, even if I say, hey, okay, I was frustrated for these reasons, now it's not good enough. You've literally tried to make me re-apologize 10 times in this meeting, re-say this, re-say that, but it doesn't change the fact that my people are sick and I'm the only person in my position that will say that my people are sick. Today, not 30 years ago, not 60 years, my people are sick today. 50% of my people's of deaths are abortion today. My people don't have the opportunities today. What I can say is the world is sick and I have slight images of utopia, slight images of happiness, slight images as a visionary and a creator. And I know for a fact the way that business deals have been done for me are keeping the world sick. What do you hope your legacy is? To be forgotten. Do you think you'll be forgotten? Because the memory, there's ego and memory in the memories. Who designed the sidewalk? Who designed the water fountain? Who designed the stop sign? Who designed the stoplight? These things are so ubiquitous that the person that designed them is forgotten. If it's a good idea, it's a God idea. And I don't know VCs can own it. I think we need to have these healthy conversations. That's what it is, healthy conversations, healthy dialogues. That's the biggest thing like, when I first wore the red hat, the conversation is less healthy than it is today. The conversation about George Floyd, you know, it's like, did I send the tweet the right way? Is Candace Owens documentary perfect? Is um, what Michael Moore, is that documentary is perfect, is Century Self? Is it fully accurate? You know, two to three hours of a transmit of information through a particular, usually one person's view. And anything you want to research, if you're interested in it, you got to look at 10 versions of it, 20 versions of it. Vision that I have to a Steve Jobs level to the point of putting that above my regular human existence. 
meaning having to go and take all the arrows, that I become a soldier of the vision. I just wish that, oh, we'll get to a place, we're not even gonna wish for it, we're gonna get to a place where people just appreciate people while they're here. You know what I'm saying? It's Madonna and Floyd Mayweather, like in the same room. These are legends. So when I saw that, I just told everybody, like, yo, let's, let's go to the back and let's just shoot some pictures. Let's capture these moments. Like these pictures are gonna be iconic. And years from now, you can go back and say, we had this moment at Delilah's. And we just live in our life and we're given that, we're given that energy. We live in that to the, to the maximum. Like people want you to like go, go inside. We outside now. So I feel like it's some poking the bear trying to antagonize me or create this like crazy narrative. Because to say someone is crazy, they're trying to take the power away and do anything to get people to not pay attention to me. That's what was so good about the Noriega drink champs is because they paid attention to me. And I changed both of these people's lives. And they're about that, oh, don't pay attention. He's a rapper, he's this, like, yeah, I'm a rapper, but obviously I'm a genius too. And yeah, this is America. And when you get strong, just mavericks, black or white, you know, Elon be going through it, Basil's be going through it. But definitely if you add the black component, you add the male component, because any form of separation, there's no such thing as like a 50-50 male-female custody. The American mindset is like it's a 99% female custody. The only time there's male custody is if male got 100% custody. My expectation is to say, look, we ain't gonna be playing these little games, these little throw a stone and hide your hand moves. Little, you know what you did. But then if I scream or react or something, it's like, look at him. He's so crazy. I wasn't crazy when I put the creative director in skims. I wasn't crazy when we made a tip two billion dollars. If I got 10 and you got two, what mind help help that out? You know what I'm saying? It has to be a respect for that for me as a creative that's working on food, clothing, shelter, communication, education. We got a basketball team, transportation, all these ideas that I'm building with you know, mavericks of the world on and major companies with. And I go home and it's, uh, my solace comes from seeing my kids and getting a solid schedule. That's why I even got the house. You know, they flipped it in the, you know, the media, like there was something wrong with me getting a house next to my kid. You see when my mom took my, me from Atlanta to Chicago, my dad didn't come to the coldest and, you know, most dangerous city in the world to be next to him. He said, I wanted to stay down in Atlanta because of my career. It's nothing with my career, with this rap, with this media, with none of that that's gonna keep me from my children. And that's what I want everybody to know. Don't play with me. Don't play with my children. And ain't no security gonna get in between me and my children. And you ain't finna gaslight me. You ain't gonna run this narrative on me. We're gonna make it better. And the people that's against me, it's like, yo, I know I might have a different way or God is using me in a different way than how it's ever been, always been done, but this world is broken. It's like, work with me. Everybody know that Ye is the living, breathing Steve Jobs, living, breathing Disney, Ford, Howard Hughes. At this point, my track record is too flawless. You get me in the ring on something that's creative and anything, you sure, I'm gonna simplify it. Like, people wanna keep things the same, people want to change it because they're afraid but what I want to just say to like everybody like man you don't have to be afraid of change I'm an empath I want the best things for everybody and I do feel like there's a blue water where there's places that we can agree on I always wanted to meet with Bernie Sanders and he refused to meet with me but I always thought that there were things that he agreed with that the earlier administration agreed with also. This was before you were with Trump or after? This is just around the time when I was wearing the red hat. Mm -hmm. And Bernie met with Cardi, but wouldn't meet with me. And, you know, I just felt like if, if, I'm, if I'm this polarizing of a character, why not meet with us? Because even like Ice Cube told me this story where you know, he said Dr. Dre came to him 
while he was an architect. He was, he was in college to be an architect. And he had the, the vinyl in front of him and said, man, you need to roll with us and do this group. And Dre had to talk him into leaving school. But when you see how Cube's mind just don't go with the programming, he's an architect, right? And in this media world, the way they kept us enslaved and entrapped was that we didn't communicate and we didn't communicate to each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, people love me and we love ourselves and we're ready for something different. Our fathers have been strategically taken out of the homes since the 80s. Drugs have been strategically put there. All the guns, the Dracos, all of that is strategically put there to, to gaslight us and to have us attacking each other. Jay-Z said something really amazing to me. He said, man, it's like crabs in a barrel. And Jay-Z said, but crabs shouldn't be in a barrel. And we've been put in a barrel. And we need to be free and move side to side or however we want to go. And it's a lack of freedom and we don't even realize. Cancel, cancel culture, bro. This is from the main person that's been canceled that will not be canceled, you know, period, bro. Your voice is the most powerful thing you have. And it works in a few ways. It works like visually, it works performance-wise, works through art curation, it works on music, of course, videos. And I think I give a good interview now. I think people can see me, feel me. I've been through some things because I'm not just all rich. Blah, 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 look, it's perfect. Like this is a great moment in my life. What my Christian brothers will come to me and say, it's like, thank God for these moments. Thank God for the, the pain. You know, thank God for this, because in that, he is strong. When we are low, when we are at our lowest, that's when God can come to his highest. You know, because how can something change if we're in group think? There's going to be someone who doesn't take the program. And so I take accountability for when I've been ramped up and not had the right mood and attitude. But it was necessary for me to not take the programming and then to not, you know, take the bullying and the manipulation. They want all celebrities in a position, basketball players, rappers, have to say, yo, we're voting in the same party as the media control party, which is the Democrats. The majority of people who own the media are aligned with the Democrats. So if you don't align with them, they literally, it's like, you, your career is gonna be over. That was really the biggest reason why I went to the hospital. Every day, imagine everyone in your life telling you your career is gonna get be over if you don't vote for Hillary Clinton. And I don't have no connection to this person. And why do you have to defend your right? Why do you have to defend your right? What little rights we got? We got like 13th Amendment in the Constitution. We got literal amendments only based on aimed at black people to lock us up, but then we're defending the rights that we fought for. What's the point of fighting and winning to vote if you gotta defend who you gonna vote on? Like I always had a difference of opinion to everyone in grammar school, everyone in high school. And I see, I think, you know, a lot of times I'm ahead of my time, 10, 10 years ahead of my time, 20 years ahead of my time. And as a leader and a visionary, I got to take a responsibility to be able to communicate to the people who follow me, where are we going, man? Where is this going? And there was a blurry time where people are just feeling lost. They didn't know where they was going. Even for Kim, she's like, where are you going? Where are you going? I know how to get there. I know, I know what this is. I've been going here my whole life. You're talking about building sustainable communities and all that and how this is going to be you know, better. And people just don't understand sometimes where I'm headed. I have to take that responsibility as a visionary to move just a little bit slower, stop, explain, you know, where we're going. And I feel that there's a lot more people along for the ride now because I am a future president. It might not be two, three years from now. I might not. But. You know, ain't, ain't never been a situation I went in that I didn't make it better. I'm an industrialist. 